ask yourself, what actions do I need to start doing? What actions do I need to stop doing? And what actions could I keep doing? Welcome to the Soul Sourced Podcast, unconventional business advice for the highly creative, secretly sensitive, and wildly ambitious entrepreneur. I'm your host, Christine Kane. Let's do this. Hello, my friends. I am going to go ahead and hit record, even though I'm sitting here obsessing because I don't know what I'm going to call this episode. I just do not. And the reason I'm doing this is because I just finished a uh, our December Up Level Academy Mastermind Retreat on Zoom. And as we do every December, we did a huge process that I created years ago for my higher tier masterminds, uh, my, my business owners who had companies. It was something I just did to help them plan their new year. And it was such a popular day that I turned it into a full process and we did it on Zoom. And it's one of those things that I wanted to share with you because it creates so many insights and it's such a different way to start to look at the coming year as a business owner and as a human (laughs) so that you're not just blindly grabbing goals out of the sky because every one of us wants to set intentions and we want to really take that time to consider our businesses, where we want to go. And in that process, what we tend to do is ignore our own wisdom. We just start grabbing goals out of the sky. And a lot of times it feels like you're just pulling pulling it out your ass and saying, oh, I want to make this much. I want to make that much. And I want to do this. And And yet we as entrepreneurs, we are often moving forward and visioning so much and looking ahead that what we tend to do is we just accumulate experiences. And most humans do this. They just keep plowing forward and they don't take the time for some reflection. And I know that might sound kind of woo and sort of non-businessy, but I think it's really important that we begin to treat ourselves as the wisdom keepers of our own business vision. You know, one of the hardest things about being a coach is that a lot of times, and I don't know, it's not really a hard thing. It's just, I think one of the dark sides of coaching is that it's very easy to put people into a position where you just tell them what to do and they lay themselves forth and say, tell me what to do. You you know, should I have an easy and should I do a launch? Should I do a webinar? And I think a lot of times this puts people in a place where they end up getting very bad advice or the coaching didn't work, and they're really bereft. Like, it's very sad when that kind of thing happens. And so one of the things I try to do as a coach is really help people stand in their own wisdom, to stand right smack dab in that soul track and strategy track of your business and understand that when you set an intention, everything that comes up after that intention is really there to to teach you, to move things out of the way, to help you let go, and to help you see where you're getting in your way. In other words, your intention contributes to some of the stuff, I would say probably almost all of the stuff that happens, not as punishment as we often like to make it, but as ways to help us learn and grow, and like I always say, to expand. And so that is a way to set up what we're going to speak to today, and that is the the ritual that I'm, I'm going to walk you not through the whole ritual because that would make this podcast last an entire day, but I'm going to give you some questions that you can then take and run with and go write in your journal or go really ponder, like, like let these sort of wash over you so that when you do set an intention and when you do set your vision or your next strategy, you're doing it from a place of awareness and from a place of wisdom as opposed to just grabbing things. Now, with that said, I want to just warn you that I am in my home. This is where I record my podcast. And um, in something I did this morning was move plants around in off of my deck because it's been kind of nice and I've been putting them out in the sun and stuff. (laughs) I let a fly in the house and Finnegan and Pearl are chasing the fly. So if you hear like furniture being knocked over in the background, don't worry, I'm I'm not being robbed. It's just the, the fly is getting chased. 
and this is just what's happening. And that was another way I could procrastinate on doing the podcast recording here is, oh, I don't have a title and oh, there's a fly in the house. <laughs> See, I write about this stuff, but I write about it because I walk in these same shoes <laughs> as everybody. I understand how easy it is to get waylaid. So we're just diving in. We're going to do it imperfect. Flies be damned. No title be damned. And I'm going to just dive right in. So what, what I want to point out when you're doing any kind of strategy work on your business and when you're thinking deeply about your business, first thing is I think it's really important that you do it from a place where you can access something. It's like an objective place, meaning I call it in my book, The Soul Sourced Entrepreneur, I call it accessing neutral. Now, that does not mean you have to beat yourself into submission and stop feeling things and stop being concerned or worried or anything. But it does mean I would really encourage you on a day or a time you're going to do this, that first off, consider not setting this up as one big long day where you're just going to sit here and do this, or that if you do want to do it in long, one long session, that you bring in a partner or a friend or some other um, colleague, someone who has a business like you, and you can both do this together and hold the space for each other because that does help quite a bit. Or if you don't have th this person in your life, do it in little blocks of time, like set up an hour here and an hour there for the rest of the year or 30 minutes or something where it doesn't feel so freaking daunting because I think we expect so damn much out of ourselves. And the truth is, yeah, it's a new year and yeah, it's a ritual, but these rituals can happen at any time. It doesn't mean starting January 1st, you have to start kicking ass and taking names. It just happens to be that this is a nice way to start, you know, it's a nice sort of milestone. It's a time that we can do this. But I do recommend that you get on a habit of uh, what I call QMWD with my clients. And that is quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily. We're always tuning in to intention in some way, not to where you're having daily rituals that take you hours, but where you do get intentional in a day. And you do get intentional each week. So the Sunday Summit, a lot of you know, that's the weekly tool. And then you do do check-ins each month. And so it's part of the deal. And another little challenge I would issue you is that I think this recording is going to come out right before the solstice. And that's another good time for a lot of people. The solstice on December this year, it's December 21st, I believe. Um, another good time to do it, not just at like New Year's, because that that uh, the cultural drive can often throw some of us off like it it just ends up like you end up hurting on January on that first week of January so I'm gonna this is my thing of like when you access neutral recognize you can do this at any time it doesn't have to be at New Year's but it, it often is a good New Year's thing to do and what I'm going to give you is pretty much just a series of questions probably five or so and I'm going to kind of suss them out of why you're asking these. And you can then take them and run with them, go go to your journal and answer them, whatever it might be. This is based on this thing that I created called the plan, a very popular exercise here at Uplevel. But, um, and, and you can apply it to your own business or your own personal life, whatever, whatever you want to do. And it, it's designed to tune you in to your own lessons, your own expansion and that's why we're in business at all, is that we grow as owners, as entrepreneurs. And there's a real, um, just a real victory in that, in all the ways that we grow and expand and become something, someone more tuned in and more aware. And our, our lessons and expansion become more delicious <laughs> and more fruitful the more we bring our own awareness to the equation. So what we're going to start with, like I said, in terms of accessing neutral, a, a really great thing to do, and I'm not going to do it here, but um, something I make my clients do I, we, before we start any day at our retreats, especially on Zoom, um, we do box breathing where you inhale for a count of four, hold for a count of four, exhale for a count of four, and hold for a count of four. And I would really encourage you to do that for at least 20, 20 times in a row, just because breathing works to kind of untangle the the web woven in the brain and start to give you put you on a track of thinking more clearly but 
I, I know a lot of you have your own breathing exercises and own ways that you like to tune in. So it's just a really good thing to do is just take some time to, to get out of monkey mind and lizard brain or whatever you like to call it. And the first place we start here when we do this is we want to look at just reviewing. And the activity of review is something, if you do the QMWD idea where you, where you set up, set yourself up to realign each quarter, each month, each week, that kind of thing. One little part of that activity, I don't like to use the word should, but would be really, really great for you to dedicate to reviewing, meaning you're, you're asking yourself, hey, how did I do this week? Hey, what did I say I was going to do and didn't do? So to that end, what we're going to do is you're going to look at your last year and you are going to start with the question, what worked? That's it. What worked? Like what went well? And you're just going to create a list of things that went well. And this is not just business, by the way. If you kept in a habit of yoga, if you kept up your meditation practice, if you continued to train or um, your rent relationships with your friends went well, or you started hosting dinners again, or whatever it might be, things that worked. And in your business, everything that worked that went well, and you're not going to tell any stories about, well, that worked, but it kind of didn't work. Always write down what worked. Don't worry about the parts that didn't work yet. And you're going to create a nice list of that. And even when you feel like you've exhausted yourself, I'm going to challenge you to sit a little bit longer with what worked because a lot of us, we focus on just the problems and we forget to celebrate the things that worked. And my bonus for you is that even even if your list is small <laughs> or you don't feel like it's quite enough or whatever, I'm going to say call up a friend or a sp- you know, get your spouse in the room, whatever it might be, celebrate some of these things. Like just say, here's some great stuff that happened this year. And I want to take the time to honor that. All right. So you're going to have this list of what worked. The next question, this is our second question, is what didn't work? And this is where you want to get granular. You don't want to say things like, I don't have money. Like that does not help your brain solve problems. It doesn't help anything. You want to get specific. What didn't work? And you're going to create a list of the stuff that didn't go well, whether it was someone you hired that didn't work out or uh, an event that only attracted three people or Zoom, you never got into Zoom. I don't know what it might be, but you're going to write down everything that you can think of that didn't work. Now, for both of these, we're talking about the entire year, and that would go all the way back to January. So it's very good to, if you need to, some assistance, go back to your calendar, wherever you, whatever you keep track of your time in, And really rethink, like we go back in time and say, what was I doing in February last year? I don't even remember. And, and look at it and find, and this, this activity here, you want to mine, M-I-N-E, you want to really mine your year for these things, because these are going to start to be what, what teaches you some of what needs to change or um, start to look at some of the patterns in them. And once you have these two lists compiled, and we take a long time at this, like I really encourage my clients when we're doing this to dive deep because you want to find every last thing that worked, every last thing that didn't work. And again, I'm going to remind you, you want to stay in that neutral zone where you're not like making this into a weapon. This is a tool, not a weapon. And you want to really look at this objectively because what you're going to try to do now is you're going to start to see some themes or you're going to see some categories. And that's that brings us to question number three here. And when you look at these lists and you're going to review this list above, and the question is, what are there any themes and categories to the things that worked or things that didn't work? And there's I don't have any way to guide you in terms of right answers. This is where you're going to use your own wisdom and you're going to look at this and just see if there's any insights or any patterns or any traits or any commonalities between the things that worked and, you know, among them or didn't work. And so like, just as an example, because sometimes examples can really help. Sometimes when we look at the stuff that didn't work, you might say, wow, there's really a theme around hiring or a theme around other people 
or managing a team or whatever, like you can really see a lot of the problems are in, really in one zone of your business, for instance. But that's that's your third question. And don't that one, I'm not going to push you on it. This is when we get insights. A lot of times when I create these tools, I'm creating them so you have sort of a place to dive off of, like a jump start kind of a thing, as opposed to the way our left brain likes to think it all works, that our insights come from the fact that I asked the question. When you look at those lists, what's going to start to happen is you're going to start seeing themes very slowly. And this is why I said that you may want to do this over a few little blocks of time as opposed to just in one day because it can it can be very deep work. And if at any time you feel like you've worn yourself out, take a break. Come back here again tomorrow. Not here, because I don't not I'm not with you, but you get the idea. So that's number three. And then as part of the review process, our next question, number four, is that you are going to look at these lists of what worked and what didn't. And you're going to say, ask yourself, What actions do I need to start doing? What actions do I need to stop doing? And what actions could I keep doing? So it's called start, stop, keep. Some of you know that. That's not an uncommon thing in the entrepreneurial world. Start, stop, keep, meaning when you see a theme in the things that worked, and maybe that theme is that you had, like I said, like the meditation habit or a team meeting sequence, a rhythm to your team meetings that really works, then you're going to put that under keep. Like typically just to give you some hints with this, you know, what, what worked tends to point to what you need to keep doing. Cause that's what, that's what worked. Like some of the habits and practices that keep on there. And then in terms of start and stop, often the list of things that didn't work are going to point you in the direction of things that you need to adjust And that can be a start doing, a stop doing. And sometimes that means an adjustment to how you work with your team or how you work with yourself or how you set up your week or how you set up your days. And that's, that's our fourth question. And that, by the way, takes some time. So this, even though I'm teaching this in a matter of 30 minutes or so, this is a, um, this is something that you want to spend some time on. And the reason, by the way, we do this like one batch activity is that this is where you begin to collect wisdom from some of the experiences you've had. Now, I know if you don't work with a coach, sometimes it's hard not to have someone to bounce things off of, but you can start putting out some, some questions for yourself of like, all right, I know I need to start doing this, but what if I, how do I, you know, those are questions you can start writing down. But it all comes from your soul track of your business. And if you don't know what I mean by soul track, I would recommend that you go grab my book, <laughs> Soul Sourced Entrepreneur. I don't, I don't need to go into the depth of that right here. But it really is the, the strategy meets the soul. And sometimes the soul is where we have a lot of our questions pop up, that soul track, and just let them arise. Um, but you have to sit with some of this stuff. And it's uncomfortable to sit with some of this stuff. And the next question, number five. We're going to have more than five, by the way. (laughs) I said five, but I am now realizing it's going to be more. The next question is not really a question. It's just where you write down your three biggest lessons of the year. So now that you've started the review process, you're going to ask yourself, what, what were the three? If I could narrow it down to three, what were my three biggest lessons of this year? And as I say this, I do know that some people can get very cynical given that it's not been an easy few years in our world. There's been a lot of, let's say, drama. There's been a lot of media hype. There's been a lot of negativity. There's been a lot of emotions. Um, Things seem to have gotten noisier. Things seem to have gotten crazier. And I know it's easy to go into cynicism, but let's go, again, we're still accessing neutral. We're looking at your life. We're looking at the area that you have uh, domain (laughs) over. And you're just simply going to say, what are the three biggest lessons that I would say I got this year? Because that's going to be a key thing to understand is that you, your business is the, is the territory of your soul's expansion, as I say in my book. But what were those lessons for you? And then I'm going to, I don't want to overwhelm you with all these different questions here. So I'm going to just, uh, ah, screw it. Let's overwhelm you. (laughs) Okay. 
<laughs> we'll just keep going until I feel like stopping. And you can turn off at any time. You know, no one's forcing you to be here. So number six, based on the review you just did, and you're really looking at um, your year and all this stuff, based on your review, I'm going to now put this in first person, based on my review, what are my go-to default behaviors or stories or habits that can feel so true that they derail me or make me shrink into old patterns of inaction. And this is where you look at very deeply, again, with objectivity, you're not trying to like beat yourself up, but you want to list at least three things that are sort of go-to default behaviors or the stories you tell yourselves or habits, bad habits you fall into. Things that really like they just lock in and they feel so real and they derail you. Really good to just simply have an awareness of them. And as your coach, since you're listening to me, I'm going to call myself your coach at this moment. Just write them down. You're just becoming aware. Like, so, you know, what is it? Is it watching the lake house 500 times just because you escape or is it you know, whatever, whatever it is, your, your default um, <laughs> gummies, <laughs> Uh, Pringles. I don't know what we do, but everyone has their own little thing and I've heard them all. So there is no judgment here. We all have our place that we go to when we get derailed. Just good to know about them. Then our next question is that sort of directly related to what you just asked yourself. If I remember that I'm on a path of mastery and you are on a path of mastery, I mean, a lot of times we think that mastery means I have to be, you know, yo-yo ma or you know, some elite performer, and that's not the case. Mastery is just a path of realignment. Given that, what support systems could I have in place to get back on track when I catch myself in an old pattern? So I, um, I work with my clients with the Enneagram. I work with them with the Colbys. And part of the gift of things like Enneagram or Colbys or whatever it is that you use is that we start to see some of these things just as patterns, whether it's a mental pattern where you get all caught in fear and overthinking or an emotional pattern where you collapse into bed and you go fetal, whatever it might be, it's just a pattern. And what I constantly remind my clients is that we're not here to like say, I have to be rid of this pattern and I have to be elite and I can't ever have, you know, that's not it. That's just bullshit. That's just games we play on Instagram. What you want to do is start to sort of think about the coming year. If you get off track in this particular way, is there a support system that you could have in place that would help you get back on track when you catch yourself in these old patterns? And if so, what would that be? And it might take some time, especially if you've never worked with a coach, because one of the things I realized that my first coach, who is no longer alive, but I wish he was so I could go back and like send him many, many gifts because he was such a gift to me. I didn't see it at the time. Sometimes when you're coaching, you don't see the gifts that come out of it because they don't start really playing out and reverberating until years later when you when you have really just locked in some of the things you learned. But one of the gifts of having a coach is that someone can really catch you in pattern and, and help you realign, hopefully without beating you up because some coaches I've heard do atrocious things, but really realign you into getting back on track, but you can have accountability buddies and you can have people who really support you to not to go kick ass and take names. Cause I don't necessarily know we all, we, that we all are on that crush it path that everyone seems to love, but the, the gift is really being able to realign. I, and I've told stories of my, my own coach and how that happened and how I got out of my own, some of my own little self-defeating patterns but how could you, like, is there a practice or a habit that would help you realign? We all get off track all the time. And that brings me to number uh, eight. I think we're on <laughs> is our next question. So much for five questions. Um, and and this, is a, this is just a good imagination sort of a question. And this is something I ask in some way, shape or form in, in all of our retreats. And I always find a way to, to do this just because it's a good brain game. If an energy angel, I'm just calling it an energy angel, I don't know what else I'm calling it, but some imaginary benign being <laughs> that's filled with love and light, like I don't want to freak anyone out. But if they were able to, like they, they sort of visit you gently every night and they surgically removed self-doubt and limiting stories from your mind, from your entire system while you slept each night for the rest of this year or for the next week or whatever, 
and you woke up on January 1st or whatever day you want to think, whatever day works for you. I don't know when you're listening to this, but on January 1st, you woke up believing in yourself 88% more than you do right now. What would you do differently in the coming year? And it's just, it's interesting because you realize if I, if I just lost all that self-doubt and all that, you know, yammer, yammer, yammer in my head, and I just started operating from that neutral place, what kinds of things would I do differently? And you, only you can know what, what that might be. So then that's, that's the whole review process. It's kind of just like a, like we've reviewed the year and we see our patterns. We do it from a place of neutrality. And then we start to really, that's when you start to look forward. And if you wanted to stop here and do it at a different time, now we start to look at like, what, what do we want to envision for the coming year? And this next question is um, probably one of my favorite questions. And uh, one of my clients wrote me to say that um, he was very overwhelmed a few weeks ago. And uh, he took this question to, he has several businesses and a lot of stuff going on personally. And he broke, I have a little uh, worksheet with this question on it. And he wrote the, printed the worksheet out and he did it for all the different businesses he had and all these little segments he laid out. And he asked this question and he said it was just a major overwhelm breaker at that point because finally he realized the different things that were weighing on him. And that question is, what am I no longer willing to tolerate? And that comes straight from my friend Dave Zampano's mouth. He's the one who used to ask me this all the time. We were in Dan Sullivan's uh, mastermind together and, and he used to bring that question up quite a bit. What am I no longer willing to tolerate? And the way we set this up with the, when I did this for the retreat was one morning we started with a list. I, I made them list up to 10 things they were tolerating in their, in their business. And then, of course, when we get to this exercise, they have that right in front of them. But this is where you're really saying, what am I no longer willing to tolerate? And it's, a, it's, it's not like I would take it seriously. I don't just sort of say, I can't do this anymore and then keep doing it. What am I no longer willing to tolerate? And this question is... Um, it's big, it's deep, and tolerations are, I think, one of the things that keep us entrepreneurs, when we stay stuck, this is the thing, this is the area that we stay stuck at quite a bit. I have a section in in my book, and um, it's, hold on, let me see if I can find, it's chapter 22, I think. Um, it's all about what tolerations are. And one little, one little thing that I'm going to say um, about that is from the section in my book on this is that I talk about how there's, uh, it's just not me. Other people say this too. I don't want to act like I'm the only one who's ever come up with this, but I, I've taught my clients for years that there's two kinds of entrepreneurial mistakes. And one of those mistakes is, is mistake of ambition where you just fling yourself into something, you go whole hog and it doesn't work out. And those I think are really good mistakes because that's part of what we learn from and we get to say, oh, that was the moment I made the mistake and oh, wow. And then we like to beat ourselves up about them. But a lot of times those things, when they aren't mistakes, they turn out to be like big, huge <laughs> risks that we took and turn into a lot of money and they're great. And then the other mistake is the mistake of um, tolerations. That's not really a word, but it's a word in coaching. And tolerations, the reason I think these are the the real mistake and this is why so many business owners lose their way and is that because these are really hard to spot. You know, they don't they don't fall into the category of a mistake because mistakes happen and you go, oh, damn, that was the moment I fucked up, you know, whatever it might be. But tolerations, they accumulate. They accumulate slowly. The mistakes are painful, but tolerations are just a little annoying. And a mistake will, I'm going to quote my book here, mistakes can bring us to our knees and force us to find a solution or a better way, and tolerations let us create excuses. And it's easy to follow, spot a mistake of ambition because you can pinpoint the exact instant you made that stupid decision, but mistakes of toleration are cumulative and punishing and let you ignore the signs. And so why we do the question of what am I no longer willing to tolerate is that it often points us where we are playing small, where we refuse to get clear, and clarity is our friend when we run a business. And so that's a, a key thing. So then we move on to our next question. I've lost track, by the way. We're now into the envisioning part. Anyway, we've done the review, so I'm just not even going to number these. 
Um, and the next question, you guys know I'm very big into Word of the Year. You can go find my Word of the Year discovery tool at yourwordoftheyear.com. I think it's all one word, yourwordoftheyear.com. You can go grab my little tool on that. But what we do for our next is what's a word of the year that would be a theme for my business in the coming year? And what's a word that would be a theme for me in the coming year? I like to pick one for business and one for personal, or you can just pick one that embodies all of it. And that's completely fine. And this is where we look at the, um, this is our last question, because I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to walk you through the entire thing, because we, we go into calendarizing things, we look at calendar, I'll give you one little hint about that, that's always a big eye opener for people. But first, I want you to just simply write down, right now, it would obviously be, be we'd be talking December 31st, 2022. So you would write that day or whatever the day is that you're intending this for. But you're going to list five things that are true in your life and business on that day. And you can make these as concrete and as segmented as you want. But I always say up to five things, but five things are really good. It can include money goals. It can include team. It can include writing your book. My hint around this is that, you know, as a musician, I started to learn that I couldn't control the number of people who bought my CDs I couldn't control the number of people who came to my shows, especially if I was playing at a theater and down the road, Lucinda Williams was playing, you know, like I can't control that, but I could control how many things I booked, how many songs I wrote, you know, all that kind of stuff. And that's where I really like to focus on is what I actually can do. And it's good to put a number goal. I love putting number goals. And even though we don't know what could happen with you know, we've learned none of us have much control and COVID and things like that have taught us the, the, <laughs> the reality of uncertainty. All that's fine. But it's really good to write clear, concise statements that are precise and, and say what following things will be true in my life and business as of uh, next year. And that's how I, that's the beginning of how I prep my clients for the coming year. And then one thing I want to say, um, we do we do a bunch of other stuff too. Again, like I don't want to go into all of it, but I do have my clients get those. We, what we did to start this retreat was I had them all. We used to, we used to supply these at when we did retreats in person. Remember then um, those those big giant at a glance calendars you have at your desk sometimes or back when we had things like that is to get those and hang them all over the wall and take little tiny sticky notes and and plan out your year. And what I tell people to do is really put your vacation and downtime and business development days and days that are off limits to clients, like you fill up sort of the rock, pebbles, sand analogy, where you set your year up so that you're putting the big rocks in first. And that includes your vacation, your self-care, the days you're getting massage, for real. Like I, I book... I book all of my appointments a year out, hair, massage, whatever you do, get those all out, get them like on the calendar when you have free days, when you have days that are business development days, days that you're focusing on your marketing, you're not going to take clients no more. No, I'm not going to do it on Fridays, whatever it might be. Put those in your calendar. You do it in Google, do it on the at a glance calendars, whatever it is, but really start to look at your year now based on the quarters and set yourself up for success by putting these things out there first so that you at least give yourself the chance to not be someone who is perpetually reacting. I know it's hard. I know when I was a musician, I probably couldn't have done this, but uh, because there's so much about booking and ca other people's calendars and when you can fit in on your tour and that kind of thing. But, it, but some of us, we would do well to set some times up that are sacred and are not um, available for clients or whatever, because these are your days, these are your weeks. And some of my clients during this planning session that we did started to say, you know what, I've always wanted to take two days every quarter to just do this kind of work, to really strategize out my business. And they put it on their calendar. So this is when you do that. This is a really good time to do that. And I know I've sort of veered off of the, the wisdom and questions, but that's just a little hint I want to give you before you start setting up your coming year. And I'm going to just leave you with that and know that I think I've gone way over my usual time on this. Oh, not really, not too bad. And, um, and I hope that this sets you up and gets you prepared for the coming year. 
And um, I will see you on our next episode. And if you liked this episode and you want to go and give a five-star review to the Soul Sourced podcast here, I would love that. And if you wrote something kicky and nice, I would love that too. But no matter what you do, I love that you listened. Thank you so much for being here today. See you soon. Sorry.